Hello friends, I hope you are doing very good. So from today onwards, we are starting a MCQ series in which you will get 5 to 7 questions pertaining to finance part and it will be related to theoretical part. This video series will be quite helpful for you for your upcoming RBI grade B examination as well as SEBI grade A examination. So today's lecture will be the first lecture of this video series and I would really encourage you to go through each and every lecture of this video series because the concepts and the questions discussed in this video series will prove to be extremely helpful as and when you will be writing your phase 2 of the respective examination. So before even jumping on to the first MCQ of this video series, let me grab this opportunity and let you know about the excellent results produced by EduTap. So for the year 2017, we got 27 final selections with respect to RBI grade B exam and 11 final selections with respect to NABAD grade A exam. For the next year, that is 2018, our results improved drastically and we got over 70 plus final selections in RBI grade B exam and 26 final selection in NABAD grade A exam. For the same year, that is 2018 and with respect to SEBI grade A examination, our results were overwhelming and out of 84 candidates selected, 41 were from EduTab. And when it comes to IBPS Agriculture Field Officer exam, we got over 100 plus interview calls. So hope so that we get a good number of selection in this exam too. So if you want to know more about the courses being offered by EduTap, you can take a quick snapshot of this slide. We offer individual courses of the mentioned examination. Our list of exams include RBI Grade B, SEBI Grade A, NABAD Grade A, RBI Assistant and IBPS Agriculture Field Officer. We even offer combo courses of the mentioned combos. Our combos include RBI NABAD SEBI, RBI NABAD, SEBI RBI and NABAD SEBI. So you can opt for any of our combo courses based upon your own exam preferences. We are glad to announce the launch of our new course that is QRE course and it is for all banking examination. Three aspects will be specifically covered in this course and those three aspects are quantitative aptitude, reasoning ability and English. So wrapping up with the introduction part and moving on to the first MCQ of this video series. So let's move on to the next slide. So as per our first question, CCCV is a type of risk management technique. What does the second C in this CCCB signifies? So we have been given with five options. Option A says contingent, option B says cartel, option C says collateral, option D says consortium, option E says cyclical. So from reading out this question, you might get a feel that this question is coming out from the risk management and banking sector topic of the finance syllabus and you are right. So if you have a basic awareness of the various risk management techniques involved in banking sector, this question might be a little bit easy for you. For others, it might be a little difficult. Nevertheless, let's move on to the explanation part to learn something more about this question. So moving on to the next slide. So basically CCCB is an abbreviative form of counter cyclical capital buffer. So this set of guidelines have already been issued by Basel committee way back in 2010 December, but implementation of this concept has taken place in India, particularly by RBI through a notification which was issued on February 5, 2015. The date isn't important. But the concept or the risk management technique and having a basic awareness of this concept is important. The other important point is that this set of guidelines is applicable to all scheduled commercial banks excluding regional rural banks that is RRBs. So now it's time for us to learn about what actually CCCB is. So whenever you observe the growth trajectory of any economy, it goes through a cyclical pattern wherein you have crest and the troughs. The crest represents the expansion phase of the economy wherein excess of credit is flowing in the economy and the industry or the economy is growing at very high rate. There is a huge amount of supply of money in the money supply chain and the trough part represents the contractionary phase of the economy wherein the economy as a whole underperform, there is less availability of credit in the market and the industry sector also performs below power. It is actually in this contractionary phase wherein there is a less supply of credit that the industry needs more amount of money in order to sustain their growth. So what does this CCCB regime says that in the expansionary phase of the economy wherein each and every industry is growing at a very high pace rather than giving all the credit to the industry sector there should be a buffer maintained and this buffer should be used at the time when the economy goes through the contractory phase because in that phase already there is a lesser supply of credit in the whole economy. So using this reserve or the buffer at that point of time will help the industry to cater to their credit needs and sustain their economic growth and overall help the economy to achieve its macro prudential goals. So this was pretty much brief explanation about the counter cyclical capital buffer. So let's learn aim about this regime. 
So the aim of triple C B regime is twofold. Firstly, it requires banks to build up a buffer of capital in good times, that is, in the expansionary phase, which may be used to maintain flow of credit to the real sectors in the difficult time, that is, in contractory phase. Secondly, it achieves the broader macro prudential goals of restricting the banking sector from indiscriminate lending in the period of excess credit growth that have often been associated with building up of system-wide risk. So this practice of indiscriminate lending just for the sake of earning more profits in the periods of excess credit growth has also been associated with the building of system-wide risk. That is a risk that can affect entire banking sector. So this was a comprehensive explanation with respect to this question. So let's move back to our question number one and let's see now we can solve it or not. So moving back to our question. So now we know that the full form of CCCV is counter cyclical capital buffer. So the second C in this CCCV signifies cyclical. So here option E becomes our correct answer. So moving on to the next question. So as per the second question, which of the following is also known as over allotment option? So we have been given with five options. Option A says pure auction. Option B says rights issue. Option C says reverse book building. Option D says private placement. Option E says green shoe option. So this question can be a little tricky one for some of us who haven't gone in depth in the theoretical aspect. Nevertheless, let's move on to the explanation part to learn something more about this question. So moving on to the next slide. So price stabilization as per green shoe option. So now the answer is disclosed that it is green shoe option, but knowing that answer is not enough, let's learn something more about green shoe option. So what exactly green shoe option is that in a public offer, it is used by companies to provide stability to the prices of shares in the secondary market immediately after the process of their listing. So a company which opts for the green shoe option, that is this process can allot additional shares of not exceeding 15% of the issue size and these shares are being borrowed from the promoters. So suppose the issue size is of 100 crore. So the 15% of issue size that is 15 crore. So not more than 15 crore can be additionally allocated for this option. So now you might be able to make that connection that this concept is allocating additional shares that is over allotting the shares from the pre-existing already allotted shares. So hence it is also called as over allotment option. So this proceed from the additional allotment will be kept in a separate bank account and this is used to manipulate or artificially manipulate the prices of the shares in the secondary market and after the time span of 30 days this money is returned back to the promoters and this whole process is managed by the lead manager. So this was the comprehensive explanation with respect to green shoe option. So let's move back to our question and let's see if we can solve it now or not. So now we know that over allotment option is also called green shoe option that is GSO. So here option E becomes our correct answer. So moving on to the next question. So as per our third question, which of the following is not a characteristic feature of forwards? Option A says OTC. Option B says no CPR. Option C says bilateral. Option D says defined lot size. Option E says both D and B that is defined lot size and no CPR. So this question is coming up from the derivative topic of the finance syllabus. And I hope that you must be knowing the full form of OTC and CPR because that will be very vital for you in order to solve this question. So this question can be a little tricky for some of us. If you feel so, please pause this video here, try and apply your own concepts and try to come out with your own correct answer. So let's move on to the explanation part to learn something more about this question. So when we look at different types of derivative, we have basically four major categories and these include forward contract, futures contract, options contract and swaps contract. And this question is pertaining to forwards contract. So let's learn something more about this part in the next slide. So moving on to the next slide. So let's learn about the basic character six of forwards contract. So basically forwards are bilateral contracts. That is in this contract, only two parties are associated. One is a seller and the other person is the buyer. So as these contracts are bilateral in nature, the contracts are mutually agreed upon. That is, there is no intermediary involved. That is, there is no existence of any stock exchange or any financial entity. Hence, these contracts are called over the counter contract. That is, agreed between the two parties and there is no involvement of any regulating entity. That is, any stock exchange. And this is the main reason why these contracts do suffer from a credit default risk. That is, any of the two parties involved in the contract can default on their obligation to sell or to buy. And this credit default risk is also called counterparty risk. 
as these contracts are mutually agreed upon and there is no involvement of any other regulating entity hence these contracts are very customizable in nature that is you can define your own lot sizes or the quantities that you want to trade in each lot so these contracts are very flexible in nature and can be customized as per the mutually agreed terms and condition of the two parties involved so this was a brief explanation regarding the characteristics of forward contract so let's move back to our question number three and let's see now we can solve it or not so the question is asking which of the following is not a characteristic feature of forwards so option a says otc that is over the counter so yes this is a feature option b says no cpr this option is wrong because there is a presence of counterparty risk so this is not a characteristic of forwards option c says bilateral yes this is perfectly correct because forward happens between two parties only and there is no involvement of any intermediary option d says defined lot size this is also wrong because forward contracts are highly customizable so you can define your own lot size so here option d is also not a characteristic feature of forward so here b and d are not a characteristic feature and these are mentioned in option e so here option e becomes our correct answer so let's move on to the next slide and to our next question so as per our question fourth mothers and sumi systems limited is an urgent requirement of financing their outstanding invoices which of the following money market instrument will be the most applicable or app for them option a says t bill option b says certificate of deposit option c says commercial bill option d says cash management bill option e says both c and d so by reading out this question you can acknowledge this fact that this question is coming up from the part primary and secondary market topic of the finance syllabus so let's move on to the explanation section to learn something more about this question so moving on to the next slide so broadly when we look at the different types of financial market we have two broad categories that is capital market and money market the basic difference between the two is that capital market is the market in which the tenure of the instruments involved is for a time period of more than one year and in money market usually it is with a time span of less than one year so when we bifurcate the capital market we have two other markets that is primary market and secondary market and the examples of capital market can be equities stocks or bonds and when we look at the money market instruments the example can be the treasury bills the certificate of deposit commercial papers and the cash management bills there are even more instrument but we will not be discussing all of them in this particular video this question is pertaining to commercial paper so we'll be discussing the characteristic feature of this commercial paper in the next slide so moving on to the next slide so let's learn about the characteristics of commercial paper that is also called cps so they are unsecured that is they are not protected by any collateral short term loans which means that they have a maturity period of less than a year and are issued by corporate entity typically for financing accounts receivable and inventories so here account receivable can be interchangeably used as outstanding invoices so these commercial papers have a basic objective of financing the account receivable or outstanding invoices and inventories and they are issued by the corporate entities as a short term and unsecured loans cps are issued at a discount to their face value that is very similar to zero coupon bonds corporates and primary dealers and all india financial institutions are permitted to issue the commercial papers but such entities require a minimum rating of a3 so you know that a minimum rating is required for them to issue this commercial papers and these ratings are given by cras that is credit rating agencies duly registered by securities exchange board of india commercial papers are issued in denominations of 5 lakhs that is the minimum denomination for which it can be issued is 5 lakh and the tenure or the maturity period of commercial paper can vary from 7 days to 1 year so the minimum maturity period of a commercial paper can be as less as to 7 days and maximum can be an year commercial paper can be bought by any individual or an entity and they also includes a non resident indian on foreign institutional investors so this was a comprehensive explanation with respect to the characteristics of commercial papers so let's move back to our question number 4 let's see now we can solve it or not so this question is asking that an entity named mothers and sumi systems limited is an urgent requirement of financing their outstanding invoices that is accounts receivable and which of the following money market instrument will be the most apt for them so we know that commercial paper is the answer but option e is given even more confusing because it is saying both c and d but cash management bills are usually issued by the government and not the private entity so hence it is out of the scope of any private 
limited firm to issue such bills and certificate of deposits are issued by the banks and T bills again by government. So here the correct answer is commercial paper. So option C becomes our correct answer. So it's time for us to move to our last question that is question number 5. So moving on to the next slide. So which of the following money market instrument has minimum issue size denomination? Option A says commercial paper. Option B says non-convertible debenture. Option C says certificate of deposit. Option D says both A and B that is commercial paper as well as non-convertible debentures. Option E says all A, B, C that is all three of them have same denomination. So this question can be a little tricky one for some of us whose concepts are not clear. But nevertheless, let's move on to the explanation section. Let's learn something more about this question. So as we have already seen in the previous slide that we have two different types of financial market that is capital market and money market and we also know the difference between the two. So when it comes to money market, there are various kinds of instrument that is treasury bills, certificate of deposit, commercial papers and cash management bills. We have already learned about the basic characteristics of commercial papers in the previous question. But in order to solve this question number 5, we need to compare the minimum issue denomination size of the various instrument. So let's do that in the upcoming slide. So moving on to the next slide. So in this slide, I have mentioned all the instruments that are given in the option of question number 5 in order to do a comparison between their denomination issue size. I have even taken up one more criteria for their comparison that is maturity time span which will be helpful for you in brushing your concepts. So this slide is pretty self explanatory and by observing this slide you can come to a conclusion that the denomination size of certificate of deposit of 1 lakh is clearly less among all the three options given. So now let's move back to our question number 5 and let's see now we can solve it or not. So now we know that comparing all the three instruments mentioned certificate of deposit has minimum denomination issue size. So here option C becomes our correct answer. So we are approaching to the end of this video. In this slide I have collated all the answers. So you can cross check your answers if you want to. This is an extra question for you guys answer to which I will not be discussing in this video. But I assure you that if you have seen this video properly, you can easily answer this question. I would really encourage you to pause this video here, go through this question and type in your correct answers in the comment section below. So if you want to know more about EduTap, you are welcome to log on to www.edutap.co.in. If you have any queries, please drop them at hello at the rate edutap.co.in. We'll be more than happy to resolve them. You can also contact us through this mentioned mobile number through call or WhatsApp. If you found the content of this video to be useful and informative, please don't forget to hit that like button and for receiving continuous update regarding the new videos being uploaded, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. That's it guys for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye. Happy learning.